security surrounding polling on Sunday will be intense. They are going to put another 7,000 military and police on the streets on top of the 50,000 that had already been mobilised to protect this election. Lisa Miller there reporting from Paris. Now, most of us are aware of the various nutrients needed for a healthy diet like vitamin A, B and C. But not much is known about vitamin K2, which links healthy bones to healthy hearts. In fact, vitamin K2 deficiency is said to pose as high a risk uh, for cardiovascular disease as tobacco use. Well, to tell us more about this important nutrient is Dr. Hogna Vick, who will be addressing the 5th Bioceuticals Research Symposium in Sydney. Thank you so much for coming in uh, to the studio to speak to us. Now, you don't often link strong bones to a healthy heart. So explain to us the correlation there in terms of K2. Thank you for inviting me. What I will say is that vitamin K2 is and this linkage because that vitamin is important for how the body will take care of the calcium part. So vitamin K2 is mandatory so we have enough calcium in our bone and also don't store it in the arteries. But don't store it in the arteries. But, you know, whenever you think of calcium, you think, well, it needs to be strong. Your bones are strong. Mm -hmm. Don't your arteries have to be soft? That's true. But uh, when we start up in life, we get a certain amount of calcium in our diet. And in order to use that the right way, then we need K2. And the problem is that uh, in previous diets, it was a lot of fermented food. That means cheeses, fermented fish, fermented meat. And then we got enough. But no, it's too little. So that is why we have a problem with this. And K2 is important that we make a special protein called osteocalcin to make calcium be placed in the bone. And also an other protein that is important, what I say, to polish the arteries so it will not be calcium there. So we need it both places. How widespread is the deficiency of K2? That is uh, the big secret, that mm. most of us are deficient. When we have made investigations, we see that uh, around 90% of the Western population are deficient. So when I grew up, um, together with my grandfather, he always took me as his oldest grandchild to say, OK, Hogna, sit down. And now we will have one piece of bread with this special cheese on. And that was extremely tasty cheese, very fermented. And when you are a boy, you just say yes to grandfather. But uh, when we have changed, nobody is eating these things anymore. So that is why we need to have supplement because we don't get enough in the food. All right, so before we get to how we actually try to supplement our diet with K2, uh, explain to us the symptoms. How do you know if you are deficient in K2? Now, that is also a difficult thing because uh, normally when you grow up, you feel you have strong bones. And this uh, when you get older. And most of us see that uh, the population get older and older and older. And then our grandparents, whoever, they very often end up with osteopenia or osteoporosis. Mm -hmm. And that is because if you don't build off strong enough bone in the beginning, then you have too little to, to live on. And then when you get older, especially for women after the menstruation has stopped, and also for men when they are 40, 50, mm -hmm. then you decline in bone density. And then you silently observe that, oh, here I had the fraction. And then we see the number of fractions are increasing tremendously. So one of the findings we have seen in our research in the company I'm working is that we can postpone this loss of bone strength with up to 70% over a three years period in healthy people mm. if you use enough K2. Right, okay, so is that a case of perhaps eating more fermented cheese, which for me is not a problem because I love cheese. Yeah, but you see, then you need to have around one kilogram fermented cheese every day. And that okay, may be a much. little too much, yeah. e even for, for me. So, so that is, uh, it's only one place in the world they have a course that have enough uh, K2, and that is a special course called, uh, called Natto, they use in some areas in Japan. But all other places, it is, in fact, I'm sorry to say, impossible to get enough K2 in your diet. So that is why we say that with the knowledge we have of how important this vitamin E is, we, we should take it as a supplement. And you should start early, even before you are born, so your mother should uh, have enough. And it's important all through the lifetime. 
So uh, this is not something we can take in a short peak and then stop. If we would like to have healthy bones and healthy arteries, we should use it very, very long until we die. And that may be a very long time. So start now. as soon as you can. Dr. Hognevik, thank you so much for speaking to us. Thank you very much. Well, owning your own home is a common Australian goal, but for many in our major cities, that goal will remain a distant dream. As Australia's population continues to grow, urban areas will be